Good morning, everybody. I hope everyone is being safe and that nobody has contracted the virus. Um, I know this is a serious situation, this pandemic with everybody dealing with it. Um, so I hope everyone is well. Um, it's been four weeks for me that I've been at home. I came down to my office today so I could present to you um, 10 questions that I typically get asked as a chiropractor. So I'm in my office, I'm gonna show you a couple things, so bear with me, this is only video number two. So I'm kind of learning as I go how to do this because um, it's not my thing usually, so I'm trying, give me some kudos for that. All right, so the first thing people ask me are, what are adjustments? What are they, what are you doing? So typically, as a chiropractor, what I'm doing is I am detecting and correcting a subluxation. What is a subluxation? A subluxation is when one of the vertebra gets slightly out of place. It's just your basic way of looking at it. It's a misalignment of the spine. Um, when this happens, it can cause a restriction on nerves, on blood flow, it can cause pain in your muscle, it can cause pain anywhere, you have referred pain, that can also happen. And what a lot of people don't realize is that when you have a restriction, and just say it's putting a restriction on a nerve, it's a, it can affect an organ. So your internal organs can be affected. For example, T4 in the upper part of your thoracic, the nerves that come out of there, some of them run to your heart. So there's always that problem, you know, if you're having maybe your heart could be racing or just something is off with your heart, it could be coming from T4, clear that out. It's kind of like a water hose theory that they used to talk about. You know, if you got your hose on and it's nice and straight, the water flows. Put a kink in that hose. What happens to the water? With that kink, the water stops. Same sort of principle that can be used for your nerves. The nerves relay messages from your brain to your body, wherever the nerves are going, hands, feet, organs, and then in return, those nerves send the signals back up. So you can have a restriction going in either direction. So if it's going from the brain down, so say the brain signals, um, okay, to your intestines, the signal coming down is, okay, we need to start peristalsis. And what peristalsis is, is just, just moving the sludge through your bowels. So, but there's a restriction. There's a kink in the line. Well, the nerves down at the bowels, they don't get that message. So there's a problem. You get constipated. All right, let's look at it from the other viewpoint. If there's a, a restriction in the nerve going up to the brain, the nerve coming from these intestines are trying to tell the brain, hey, there's something going on down here, but it's not getting up to the brain, so the brain can't try to reboot, if you will, and get things going again. So this is where chiropractic comes into play with the adjustments. Now, what do I use to do the adjustments? And I'm gonna show you that in just one second. All right. Back on? Okay. All right, so I've got it set up so it's aimed at my table here. So let me get over there. All right, so the first thing is the table. Okay, so I'm going to use my hands for your typical adjustments. And I have a table here that has drop pieces in it that actually pop up and down to help me do the adjustment. And as a demonstration, this piece right here, it comes up a little if you're laying on this table. I will put pressure on you and do a maneuver that's going to drop to do the adjustment. I use this a lot for setting the pelvis because to me the pelvis and the sacrum is very important about what it's doing for the musculature, musculature in your low back, down through your legs, and especially in the glutes. All right, some other tools. These are activators. Um, some people call them clickers, but they're actually an activator. So they have a tip on it. I don't know if you can see it. I, I'm kind of far away, but I couldn't fit it all in. 
So with the, the tip of the activator, when I find a segment that needs to be adjusted, I can put this right on there and it helps to tip it into place. These are used for gentle techniques, okay? And this one I use for babies. This one's a little more powerful, so I use this one on adults. Now the other tool that I use is called an Arthur stem. A lot of my patients call this thing a woodpecker. So it's got a pronged end. I don't know if you can see that. It's got a pronged end on it. This comes off, I can actually use a smaller tip. And I also have a ball tip, um, which I have sitting over there. Anyway, the way this works is I straddle the center of the spine and I tap it. And what I love about this tool, I've been adjusted with this since 2008. This thing is phenomenal. Um, sometimes there's people that are hard to adjust, but this, what I love about it is that it gets through the tight muscles, actually stimulates that nervous system. It has so much rapid pulsation per second, and I don't remember the exact count on the pulses per second, but it's very rapid. It helps to override that musculature and it gets that motion going where it needs to be. And there is a video that's out that shows um, how this works, what it's doing with the spine, because when it's used, it creates this fluid motion with the spine and it helps loosen things up and it helps free up those nerves and it stimulates the nerves and helps get things flowing. Um, other things I may use, I've got ultrasound that is for therapy. It's a heat therapy um, that helps with you know, tight muscles, if you've got trigger points, um, if you've got low back musculature, I use it more for that, but I've also used it on shoulders and on knees. Um, it just helps speed up the healing process. It brings blood flow to the area and helps speed things along that way. Um, I also do Gua Sha. Gua Sha um, is a handheld tool with some lotion. And basically we're working on the muscle trying to break up the adhesions that are in there. And again, it brings the blood flow up and it helps break up those adhesions and gets things moving for you and loosens them up so you feel better. All right, I'm gonna put on pause again and we're gonna continue on with another question. Okay, at some point I gotta figure out how to cut those in between times when I'm trying to set this thing back up and I hope that doesn't show up on there either. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm still learning this whole video thing. All right, so the next question that I have, this is question number three, when do I get adjusted? Me and you. So for me, I look at things differently, I think, than some other chiropractors do. Number one, I don't consider it a cookie cutter, cookie cutter, technique all right I've worked in some places that you do the same thing for every person that comes in and I personally don't believe in that so I need to find out you know through the exam and when I'm touching your spine I have to find out where the restrictions are what's going to work for you number one can you handle hand force do you need gentle technique What's going to work for you? Do you freak out over the popping sounds that your neck may do? You know, so all these things I take into consideration on what's going to help you, what you can handle, and what's going to get you where you need to be. Um, as far as when do you get adjusted, you get adjusted more frequent in the beginning. Uh, most people that come in the beginning, that's where in, they're in the most pain. So when you first come to the chiropractor and your first adjustment, you may or may not feel an improvement right away. So what you're looking at is starting off more frequently and then over the course of a few weeks to a few months, you stretch that out. My goal is to get everybody on maintenance plan. That's where we need to be. That is preventative. Okay. What do adjustments do? I kind of went over that a little bit already. Um, the adjustments increase blood flow. They get rid of restrictions of the nervous system. They relax the muscles. They improve your immune system. Yes, 
with what's going on right now, chiropractic is actually very good when it comes to you getting sick because it helps your body improve in, it boosts the immune system so your body can actually fight off these germs. It improves your healing. Um, not that it does it, but what happens is because the restrictions are removed from your body, it allows your body to do the healing itself. So I'm not healing you. You are healing you, if that makes sense. And one of the other good benefits from this is a lot of people experience better sleep. So decreased pain levels, increased range of motion, because uh, sometimes like people who can't turn their head side to side, they have a restriction. We got to clear that up. So you can actually drive your car and look over your shoulder because you need to see what's going on back there, right? So this is things that um, it can help improve. How soon will I notice the difference? Question number five. How soon will I notice a difference? That depends on each person. Some people, it's immediate. They get off my table, they walk around the room a little bit and they're like, oh my God, it's gone. I feel great. Others, it takes a little time. And I try to explain to people what we have going on when you are in pain, it took a while to get that way. So it builds up over time. So when you finally get yourself into a chiropractor to start working on this, it's like peeling away the layers of an onion. All right, it's not going to be a rapid, that's why you have to come frequently in the beginning and then we stretch it out because for most people, it's those layers of onions that we have to get through. It's not an overnight thing. It took you a while to get at the condition you're in, it's gonna take a while to get you out of that condition but you will notice the difference. One thing that people do is, if you know the pain scale, zero to 10, 10 is the worst pain. So say you come in to see me and you tell me you're at an eight. Okay, that's pretty high. Uh, 10, usually people are so bad they're in the hospital once they hit 10. But just say, just say somebody's an eight. So they come in, they get adjusted the first time, what I want you to do is when you go home over the next couple of days, pay attention to that pain level. Look at where you are every day. Are you still an eight? Has it dropped down? Within a week, you should see a very small improvement. If you're at an eight at the beginning of the week and you start treatment, you should be seven. Even if it's a 7.5, that's okay. That's an improvement. However, most people, they usually tell me there's a much bigger drop in that pain scale than just that. So that's the plus. All right, question number six. What do I expect after I get adjusted? Well, again, that depends on everybody. What I try to tell everyone is 80% of the people who get their first adjustment feel fantastic when they leave. They feel great. They, they notice the improvement, they can move, they got range of motion, their pain is down. Then you've got about 10% of the people that they don't feel no, no change. They don't feel any change at all. Then you've got another five to 10% of the people that, well, it's a little sore. And I'm gonna tell you, you're gonna be sore by tomorrow morning because it's your body's not used to it and you're gonna feel sore like you worked out your muscles. So if you leave and your bodies are sore, use ice, you know, 20 minutes on, 20 minutes off. The ice will help decrease that pain sensation. Your body is gonna to have to go through the healing process itself. Okay, and it is a gradual healing. All right, question number seven. Will I need more adjustments? All right, so say somebody comes in, they get their first adjustment and, hey, I feel great. I don't think I need to come back. Yeah, no, that's not the way it works. See, the problem is muscle has memory, okay? So when I move something to where it's supposed to be, your muscle is gonna say, no, 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 no. That's not where it's been for the past year. So it's gonna pull it right back out. So this is why it's a retraining process for the muscles in your back or wherever it is I'm, I'm adjusting. 
So you have got to understand the memory of the muscle fibers is going to pull it back out. And I completely expect that. I expect you to feel actually not so great the next day. It's like I, you never even got adjusted. This is that retraining process. This is why we have to do step by step. All right, as your body heals, the muscle is actually learning. The muscle is learning to not let that slip back to where it was before. We want it to stay in its true position. That's where it needs to be. The muscle needs to leave it alone and let it go from there. We'll continue on with your adjustments. And as we go through it and we scale down your frequency, you're going to notice that you're going to hold the adjustments longer because the muscle is actually learning and retraining. All right, question number eight. What should I do at home to prevent further injury? Well, I don't want you to go home and you feel good, so you're going to start doing stuff you haven't done in a while. Don't do that. You're just going to mess yourself up. Yes, I want you to stretch. Um, you could do some at-home exercises that are simple, but I don't want you pushing yourself. I don't want you in the beginning to just overdo it. You don't want to do that. You want to do stretches. Be conscious of your posture. If you're at work, say you're sitting at a desk all day, take breaks. Do those stretches. Get yourself a little bit of time to let this tension ease off because it's all tension and we all get a lot of it up here across the top of the shoulders, especially the computer workers, anybody working with arms, hairstylists, um, a lot of it is in the upper back and into the neck. So you need to stretch and it helps. It really does. It's not going to be 100% perfect with the stretches, but it'll get you through until you come see me again. All right, next question, number nine. Is prevention the key? Yes, absolutely. Prevention is maintenance. So once we get you out of the pain level, once your body is healing, once you're holding these adjustments and your range of motion is improved, you're feeling good, you are at the stage of, hey, let's get you, just come in, we're gonna tweak you either once a month, every four to six weeks. Come in, get tweaked, you're not in pain. What you're doing is prevention and that helps you to not fall back into that rabbit hole of pain that brought you to me in the first place. Make sense? Okay. All right, number 10. Who do I treat? Who don't I treat? <laughs> okay, um, typically um, patients who are thinking about doing spine surgery, before you go under the knife, give a chiropractor a chance to see if that will help you. Go to chiropractic, doesn't have to be me, whoever's in your area, go to chiropractic before you go under the knife. Give it at least three to six months to see if it's gonna help you, if you're gonna have a level that you're actually able to live with. Um, I hear so many people talk about, you know, I wish I had never done that surgery. Now, if you've had surgery and you come to a chiropractor, you can still be adjusted. But let's just say you've got metal implants, um, screws or the metal rods, metal plates, things that are fusing sections together. I can adjust above it and I can adjust below it. So don't think that because you've got metal, that you can't be adjusted. That is completely not true. You can be adjusted above and below. There's no way that I'm gonna mess with metal that you've got fusing two segments or three segments together. Not gonna happen. I need to know where they are and I'll adjust above and below. All right, who else? Um, infants to elderly. Yes, infants. So I have actually worked with maternity, um, pregnant women. If you get adjusted while you're pregnant, it actually helps your delivery. It goes much smoother, it may go quicker, your cervix will open up a lot faster. Because believe it or not, you have nerves that go down to help deliver that baby. And if you are not adjusted, if, if the messages are not getting through, like, hey, it's delivery time, 
your body's not going to want to open up and it's not going to let that baby out and you're going to be stuck with a c-section which is what happened to me so i wish i had known about chiropractic back in the day um infants absolutely work on infants infants bone structure is actually cartilage they are so easy to adjust um, if you have a whiny crying baby if you've got colic if you've got tugging at the ears um, all those can be worked with as chiropractic adjustments it's a, it's a treatment process for babies and it does help a lot a lot of babies um, when they get to be toddlers have to get the um, tubes put in their ears before you do that, give chiropractic a chance to help your child. All right. Adjusting the neck helps that baby. And the reason for that, the way the ears are in an infant, those eustachian tubes are straight across. So when fluid gets in there, they can't drain. And in adults, because we've elongated, we've grown, those tubes are pointed downwards and they typically drain by themselves. But in an infant, they're not, you know, they're kind of big headed babies and short little necks and just everything's kind of compact in the baby. So those eustachian tubes are straight across. So when we adjust the neck, it gives those tubes, because the way we rotate the neck a little bit and do a little adjustment, it helps with little tiny pressure points to actually drain fluid from those ears. And it helps those kids. And then you don't have to worry about doing tubes in your ears tubes in the ears I mean that that to me is just so scary for a baby and for a mom you know it's just not it's not a good thing not a good thought all right um so that's maternity infants any age group you name it we can adjust it I can adjust it you name it I'm here I can do it um all right symptoms or conditions Headaches, migraines. I think in my first video, I mentioned the migraine patient that I saw my very first patient that I ever shadowed and saw what happened. Migraines and headaches are a big one. Neck and shoulder pain, back pain, pelvis, knees, ankles, scoliosis. Scoliosis is a big thing too, because when you got that curvature in your spine, you're gonna be rotated. Now I can't get the scoliosis out it may improve slightly on its own with chiropractic adjustments, but what it's going to do is help you manage. Scoliosis can cause pain in a lot of people, and even without scoliosis, other people who have back pain. So you're looking at chiropractic as also pain management. Chiropractic adjustments help your body to help you. Again, we go through the healing process. We clear out restrictions, your body can heal itself, and in the process, your pain levels go down. So, I hope all that made sense, and I hope, you know, it works out well. Um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to drop a line below, and hopefully I will be open again seeing people soon. It looks like May 5th is where I'm gearing towards. Um, I'm inside a gym, so I have to follow the gym rules. Hopefully the gym will be open by then and hopefully things will get back on track and I hope the world gets back on track because we need to work. Uh, as Trump says, you know, America is not made for just sitting still. We are a working people and we need to get out there and work and thank you Thank you to all the doctors and nurses that have been working overtime with all this coronavirus 19. Um, you are very much appreciated. First responders, you are so appreciated. I can't thank all of you enough. All right, well, that's it for my 10 questions. Um, again, if you wish to leave me any feedback or ask any questions, just drop a line below and I will hit you up. I will plan another video. Hopefully it'll be a little bit better than this one, but I was trying to move things around. So everybody have a blessed day. Take care. Bye-bye.